Well, hello there. Here we are today in a very, very hot workshop with our 1976 Electrolux 87. And in this video, we're going to take it apart and give it a good service. <laughs> As I mentioned to you in the previous video when we first saw the 87, it sounds very much like the motor is a bit tight. Um, I suspect the bearings are very, very dry in it. Now these are really, really simple cleaners, so it won't take us long to do this. And uh, I think we've seen this motor before on the channel when we were looking at the Electrolux 65, because they have pretty much exactly the same motor. Oh, we also need to take the suppressor out. Don't let me forget that. We definitely need to do that because um, we really don't want it to go bang on us. So I think we should make a start. Let's get this back panel off. Now in order to get into the 87, we need to uh, remove its bum. So first of all, we'll take the filter out. Just take that cover off. Look at the state of this filter. It really is manky as anything. Look at it, ugh, nasty. Um, and you'll notice here that there's four little rubber feet. Uh, well, there should be four, there's only three on this one, but the screws are hidden behind those little bungs. So we need to take these bungs out and then we can undo the screws and we'll be inside. So I just need to change how I'm sitting here to do this because uh, it's not easy to do this on the bench this way around. We sort of need to be vertical. So let's give that a go. I'm very much hoping you can see this because I can't see the camera screen. So let's just get these bungs out. I probably won't put these back in because they look a bit manky to be honest with you. And seeing as we've only got three of the four, kind of makes sense that we get rid of them. So let's pop those out. Now I can't remember what I need to do with the switch panel. I think it should just come off with this still attached, but we'll give it a go, see what happens. Should be us in. I think I might try and get those screws out actually. Wow, they're really, really long screws as you can see. No danger of mixing them up with anything else. Huge! Let's pop those out. Then we should be able to get the back panel off. Oh, actually, maybe, maybe I do need to undo these. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. Yeah, looks like I do. Okay. Pop those two out so now this panel should come away oh yeah there we go okay um yeah still thinking that it should just pop up oh, it does just pop off i thought so i thought so i didn't think i was going mad oh this hasn't been taken off for a long long time uh right so there we go so now we're inside and we should be able to slide this off ah now look at that that's interesting ah well, flipping egg. I am genuinely surprised, everyone. Genuinely surprised. Right, let me move around a bit on the bench and uh, we'll take a look at this. Now, this is not what I expected to see at all. This is, as I'm sure you know, uh, the later style Lux motor. And I was convinced, absolutely convinced, that this machine would have oops, this style motor in it. Listen to me bring the camera up a bit so you can see it. Let me put this next to it. There we go, so you can see the size difference in the two. This is the style of motor that came with the um, Electrolux 65, and I think this was actually out of a, of a 65, and it is what I was expecting to see in the 87, because I know they did come with these motors, the earlier ones came with these motors, and then obviously the later ones came with this newer style motor. So I'm genuinely surprised to see that in there. I'm going to pop that back in my drawer, along with other spare motors. Um, now this motor seems to have a date on it as well, which is quite cool. I, it's rare you see that. Look, 7634. So the, the 34th week of 1976. And let's just check the machine, just to see what year, sorry, what month the machine has. Ah, yeah, look at that, that's interesting. The machine has... Uh, 35 6 on it if i can show it show it to you there if i can get the camera to focus come on focus in there, hopefully you can see that just there looks 6 35 so the 35th week of 76 and this motor is the 34th week of 76 so definitely goes to prove that this is the original motor for this machine but yeah genuinely surprised that uh, it's got one of these 
kind of makes it easier for us actually because these, these motors are much easier to service than the, the older style. So that's good from our point of view. Now whilst we're here, I'm just going to pop this back on because um, I didn't need to take that off. It should just slide in like so. There we go, that pops in there and now we can put these screws back in. Just do them up quick. There we are, good, that's nicely back together. Um, now, obviously we can see from this motor that it's very, very dusty uh, and it does need a good service. So we'll do that now. We'll clean it off, take it apart, skim the comb, lube the bearings, and then we should be good. Uh, oh yeah, we need to clean this fan as well. I don't know if you can see there, but the fans are quite quite loaded. So we'll get a, get a small screwdriver in there. It doesn't feel too bad, actually. It doesn't feel overly tight. I suspect what was happening was that my brain was expecting to hear the old style motor. Um, and then when I heard the new style motor, uh, something was obviously not amiss, uh, so something was amiss in my head, and I thought, oh, that doesn't sound right, but yeah, there we go. Um, oh, look, interestingly as well, look, if you check out the suppressor there, you see that it's starting to go, look. So this has previously started to fail. Um, we've got too much reflection. Uh, you can just see there that um, it's starting to come apart. So actually, I think what we might do first of all is remove the wiring um, and then we will remove the suppressor from this motor. So let's do that first. Now I've been heating up my soldering iron. So hopefully we can desolder these wires from the suppressor. So this will give us a bit more, um, a bit more access to it. a massive lump of solder on this side. Oh, flip the neck. There we go. Okay. So that's that desoldered. And we can move the end of the machine out of the way. Just hang my soldering iron up. Whee! My soldering iron just went down. And it's going to burn things, which is not ideal. Oh, for lip's sake. Let's get this out of the way so we don't start a fire. Um, now we can remove the suppressor itself. I wonder actually if, um, yeah, I'm going to desolder it whilst it's in situ like this so I can get these copper wires off. It's slightly tricky because I'm doing it with my left hand. One. Where is this wire running? Where's it going? It's tricky to get this one off. Oh, come on, you. Neck. Oh, there we go, got it. God, it's massive that one. There we are. That was why it was so difficult because it was all the way through all that solder. Okay, so with those desolders, just clean up my tip. Got to have a clean tip. And now we can remove the suppressor from the motor by undoing this screw. So we'll have a look and see what we've got going on here. So let's check it out. So yeah, there we go. You can see now very clearly that the suppressor itself has started to fail. Um, and I think it has gone bang at some point. I suspect it probably took out a fuse with it as well. Um, so now we just need to remove this little devil from this board. So I'm going to shut up now and be quiet and then just do the desoldering of this. This could be a little bit tricky. Um, I won't do this on camera because uh, it's going to take a while, but um, when I've got all this off, I'll be back. There we are, that's that done. So we have a little bit, bit of breadboard here, um, sans uh, suppressors, and here are the two bad boys. You can see this one is definitely, definitely going, or has gone, in fact. It's uh, 
not in the best condition. This one's all right. I don't think this one really does much, to be honest with you. So yeah, they can go in the bin. Boom. <clears throat> and then we can put this little bit of breadboard back on the motor. Let's just give this a clean. Poor old Mila sounding rough as ever. And let's just uh, get the screw, pop this back on. Make sure these wires are out of the way. There we go. Let's get this tightened up. There we are. That's our breadboard back in place. So now we just need to solder these field wires, wires back on. Well, they're not field wires, they're motor wires, aren't they? Of course they are. Silly me. Now, where's my solder? Oh, there it is. Okay, let's pop some new solder back on here. That. Get some good flow going, hold it down with the screwdriver, Oop. and that should hold in place. Yep, that's one done. We've got a load of solder left on this wire, that's a huge amount. Now, can I get that? Let me see, just hold that down. Because so I think I might just be able to do it with what I've got. Let's pop that down, melt that. That should all flow. Slightly tricky to do. There we go. There we go, that's those back in. And now we just need to reconnect the wiring. Pop that up like that. And again, should just be able to melt that over. Give it a bit of a heat it up, there we go. That flows nicely, there we are. Just pop this one in. Oops. Oh, I think the pad's detached. Oh, that's a shame. Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, yeah. So, see, the trouble is here that the, the solder pad has uh, detached from the breadboard. Um, it's, it's not a big deal. It's fine. It's fine. It'll be okay. Um, it's just uh, <laughs> slightly annoying that, that that's happened. Okay, let's turn the... <laughs> Turn the soldering iron off. I've just got to be a little bit careful. I might put some hot glue on this. So um, I'm just going to turn my hot glue gun on. So that's heating up for us when we need it. Is that on? Yes. So that's heating up. So that's great. So now let's just get ourselves inside this motor and we'll give it a clean. So we just need to detach the two holders like so. And then we can get inside. Plenty of life left in the carbon brushes, so that's good. So we quick look down there. Yeah, plenty of life left in those. That's brilliant. That's really good. Um, and yeah, it's not too bad, you know. That, <laughs> goodness me, I've heard a lot worse than that, I tell you. Um, the commutator's nice as well. Nice and even. No problems with that. It's good. So let's just clean out the base. A little bit of a spruce. <laughs> oil in. Now where's my oil gone? Oh there it is. So we pop some oil on the bottom bearing and just let that drip down like so. Give it a turn. Oh yeah see instantly you can see that it becomes freer. Instantly look at that. Yeah that's much better. Good out. Okay, and I think whilst we're here as well, whilst we've got it like this and we can hold it easily, oh, I'm just going to pop that solder back in my in my drawer. Um, we'll just give the veins of the fan a little clean. So let's just do that quick. There we are, that's a little bit better. So just let me um, suck that out a sec. Make the, make the motor go.
what we could do is we can actually skim the commutator using the mealer. So if I just make a seal using this old sock on this hose. <laughs> Nice easy way of doing it. Use your bench rack to drive the fans and then um, give, the, give the comma skim. There we are, that's looking much better now. That's really nice. Yeah, good. Now, you, you, you're probably going to say to me, well, Steve, you haven't done an overly great job on those fans. I'm not entirely that worried about it, to be quite honest with you, because this is only, this, it's a 550 watt motor. It's not particularly powerful, it doesn't spin at a huge velocity. Um, and anyway, because of the start of the motor, you cannot clean the rear fans either. Uh, you can't get to them because of how this motor is made. And they've got, it's got this pressed on heat, sh heat shrunk sort of washer come nut that you cannot undo with these Lux units. This is always, I mentioned this to you in the past. This was always their failing that uh, you couldn't take the fans off. I mean, they are a particularly re reliable motor and that they do go on for years as, as this one's proven. Um, but uh, yeah, they are a bit of a pain. But yeah, as I say, I'm not overly worried about the fan vanes. They will be fine as they are. And when the motor starts up anyway, it'll, it'll, it'll flick off more of the loose dirt. So that's fine. I'm not overly worried about that. Now let's give it some lubrication on the shaft, like so. Pop some grease on there, not too much, as we know. Don't want to over egg the puddlin. Pop that like that. And now let's get the fuel coil back. And then we will um, capture the uh, carbon brushes and lock them in place so we can get this back together. That's one. Two. And they're locked. We'll be slightly careful that I don't rip that wire off before I've hot glued it. Um, and let's get the fuel coil back on. Yeah, that goes on really nicely, actually. That's, yeah, really quite nice. And now we'll open up these tags, clips, I suppose you'd call them. Pop them back on. There we go. And we should have a nice, smooth working motor. That's the, that's the plan, anyway. Let's hope it comes to fruition. Oh, I can't go on. Oh, oh almost. That, that was almost not good. Oh, they could be buggers, those clips. They could be, ah, be really, really tight. Um, okay, so that's good. Now, the hot glue gun should have heated up by now. Oh, yes, it's all spewing out the end. So let's, um, let's pop some hot glue over this terminal to make sure that that does not fracture. Oh, I don't like this hot glue gun, it's not very good. It's a little special and it's just, it's not really up to the job. See, not much comes out when you squeeze the trigger. Main of my life. Story of my life. Uh, okay, let's turn the hot glue gun off, which is that plug. Okay, I'm just gonna hold this for a second. Um, just to make sure it sets and I'll be right back with you. I think that's all right. That's good. So um, now From what I remember with the 87 you could do something quite funny with it. If you put the Cover back on like so Make sure it's locked in place flip this over and just put it in the indentations of the uh, the rear case sorry the rear casing like so, let me bring you up so you can see it. You can actually run it like this because the motor can't spin. It's it's really, it's it's captive in there. Um, and it's such a simple cleaner anyway, that there's really nothing else to go go on here. Um, so, oh goodness me, I can't, get, I can't reach the plug. And that's caught around my chair, of course it is. Oh, for the love of God. Anyway, okay, let's see if it works, shall we? Let's, um, 
let's just give it a go. I don't know if that on-off switch is on or off, but uh, we'll soon find out. Oh, no, it's off. Okay, let me bring this in like that. Here we go. You ready? Okay, well, that's good, isn't it? Oh, you know what I've done, don't you? I'm such an idiot. Oh, the number of, <laughs> the number of times I've done this. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, this is why we run it without putting it back together. Without putting it back together fully. I forgot to release the carbon brushes. And if you don't release the carbon brushes, <laughs> the machine's not going to run, is it? Fool. There we go. Click, click. Right. Brushes released. Motor back in. Line it up on the spring. Is that correct? Yes. There we go. Okay. Let's try that again. Where's the plug gone? The plug has escaped, of course. Ah, oh, dear me. All right, here we go. Okay, let's hold this down. Yeah, well, I'm happy with that. Hopefully, you're happy with that as well. I think that's pretty good. Do you know what, guys? I am <laughs> I'm rather dubious about Electrolux's claims that this is a 550-watt motor. I'm not sure it is, you know. I wonder if it's actually 750, possibly 700. I can't remember what the, the 330 used. If this is 1976, then 345 was, was, was definitely on the market, and I can't remember if that was 750 or 770 watts. I just it just feels to me like it's slightly more than 550 watts if you know what I mean um I don't know if that's just me being I don't know just maybe thinking that it's something that something or nothing but it just kind of feels like it may be a bit more powerful than what they're saying um on the tin so now we need to get this back in the body <clears throat> now this is always fun um I think I think you can do it like this if you put the body like over like that you should be able to get this in this way i'll give it a go i'm just going to move you so you've got a better view and hopefully you've got a better view now so you can see a bit more what's going on um, i'm going to try and do it like this i'm going to try and get this in this way because technically it should work you should be able to do it but whether or not you can is another matter because otherwise it's very difficult to jiggle everything in place well it's difficult to jiggle everything in place anyway but it just makes it harder if it's upside down. <sighs> Come on. No, it doesn't seem to want to go, does it? Because the motor won't line up when it's... Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's get the skids in. Oh, I want the skids. Ugh. You ain't kidding. No, the skids don't want to go in. Come on. Oh! That might have done it. Let's have a quick look inside, see if that's lined up. Oh, it's not quite lined up, but I might be able to move it. Ah, there we go. That is lined up now. Okay. Oh yeah, I think that's actually worked. Would you believe it? That's actually worked. See, that's much easier than doing it with the machine on its face. And um, going in the bottom, if you, <laughs> pardon the expression. Um, so let's just turn them over now. So uh, if I just quickly get these screws in, I'm not going to move you because I just want to get these screws in quick whilst, we, whilst we're at this, at this juncture. I just need to make sure everything's still, yeah, the skids are lined up, aren't they? Yes. Yes, that's the worry. Let's get these in. Oh yeah, I think we've done it. Yeah, good. This is good. good. Tighten. Yep. Yeah, good. There we go. Lovely. Okay, I think it's time for a time for a run. Let's see what it sounds like when it's in the when it's back in the body. Stick the plug back in. Like so, um, just so. Oh, 
these feet, I'm not going to put these rubber feet back on. I think that's just a complete waste of time. Uh, not feet, bungs, little stoppers. Uh, just so you know, I have washed the bag. I did just wipe it over the carpet downstairs in the dining room. And it picked up a remarkable amount of dirt for, um, for, for the small amount of time I used it. I'm not convinced this is the right bag for the 87. Because if you look here on the body and see where... See how far down the body it goes. It only goes to here, but in actual point of fact, there's like another six inches before the motor. And I convinced myself that these bags used to be a lot bigger, and I thought I had one here. But of course, this being my workshop, I cannot find anything. So yeah, I can't prove it to you, which is a right pain in the bum, but it just doesn't look big enough, does it? I, what do you think? Do you think that's the right size? I think it's too short. But anyway, we're not going to put a paper bag in here. Um, we're going to do something else with it. So anyway, let's pop that back in there. Let's turn the machine on. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. You can you can hear it takes it takes longer to wind down now. So what we've done to the bearings is absolutely spot on. That's exactly what we wanted to do. So we now have a fully working desuppressed 87, and I'm very happy with that. Well, our 87 is back on track to, to being as good as it possibly could be. Goodness me, I'm absolutely sweating. It's so hot here right now. It's South Wales, it's like the one weekend of the, of the entire year where it's actually warm. And it is really, really warm. Oh, I'm so, so sweaty. Whew, I need a nice cold drink. Um, yeah, so really pleased with the outcome of the 87 so far. Still a lot more work to do on this cleaner. We need to create a new exhaust microfilter um, out of the uh, Henry Pepperflow bags that are over there. We also need to create a pre-motor filter out of the same material. Uh, and also, it needs a really good clean, a really good scrub. I think, I think, I think, famous last words, this is going to actually scrub up really nice because there's no like dents or deep scratches or anything on this plastic. Uh, even the vinyl is, um, is in really nice condition. There's no, there's, there's no cuts to it. It's not ripped at all. It's just really dirty. The, the poor old thing's probably never been cleaned. So that, is the topic for the next 87 video. I don't know if it'll be the next video that comes out, but it will definitely be the next 87 video. We'll give it a really good clean, um, and hopefully we'll also see it in use. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, always appreciate your time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to do the usual, commenting, subscribing, and liking, because I always love hearing from you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.